Oh, it's you. How have you been? I've been really busy. Yeah, it's me! Back from the land of the livid dead. And today's teardown step is one of these. Straight from the techies, it had a disc in but I've removed it. I have had a tertiary teardown, but not on camera. So, let's not waste any time and get to demonstrating, cracking it open and attempting a repair. So here's the monolith. We fire it up, flip the switch on the back, we got the usual standby LED, but watch the problem. It's a classic one with some googling round that is basically caused either by the hard drive error, which it doesn't seem to be having because the old remove hard drive and put it back in for it don't work, regardless of whether you power out with the hard drive out of it or not. Or the other thing is it had an overheating incident. Hmm, I'm thinking the ball grid array chips may have decided to desolder themselves in its overheating accident. Because this thing had a lot of dust in it. I've cleaned it all out now, but there was an insane amount. There was all these balls of it congealed in all sorts of nooks and crannies. So, let's not waste any time and take it apart. With On the bottom we are greeted with one heck of a massive fan and heat sink system that really puts Microsoft to shame along with our backup battery for the BIOS yes these things will use a BIOS and clock settings because these things got have been getting more and more like PCs in fact they pretty much are nothing more than glorified PCs these days with the latest generations of the PS4 and X-Bone and of course massive great actually really quite, you, if you look at the thickness of the coils in there, they are really quite thick cables on here. This is a hefty fan, and I reckon if you touch this when this was running, it would hurt a lot, a lot more than even a powerful PC fan. This thing chews a lot of current. Yeah, I'm starting to see where the 32 amps comes in. Then of course we've actually got the heat sinks of heat piping. Going to the actual heat sink unit here. PS3, not so heavy now, but it's still got most of its weight there because most of it will come from the heat sinking. Another thing I'd like to know, it uses one of these lovely kettle lead modules with a built-in switch. PS2 did this, love it. Wonderful design, nice thick cables thing. More companies should do this. Well here we have who made the PS3 essentially. Fukuwaru, I'm not even gonna buy it, electric. I'm guessing they are the Foxconn equivalents that Microsoft uses because Microsoft uses Foxconn. Because I know there's two major competitors that manufacture the consoles and one is Foxconn and the other one I would imagine is now this place. I just didn't know the name of it before. And still don't because I can't read that. I am surprised. We seem to be being mooned by the board. We don't actually have that much on the bottom. It's mostly just passives and a few power regulatory and peripheral chips. And of course what looked to be... These aren't memory. They're made by NEC. They look like large, powerful powering ductors. And of course we have our tracing. This looks like it's the CPU. That'll be the GPU. And that's essentially our self bridge by the looks of it. But if you look, we've got loads of differential pairs. And here looks like where the main memory lives. We shall find out when we get to the top of the board. If you look, you'll notice that the differential pairs are all in various configurations. The reason why they're often like bent in curly-whirly positions like this is so all the traces match the same length. 
or otherwise you risk them or otherwise you risk the traces acting a bit like delay line memory and then you end up with critical at these frequencies you can end up with critical bits of data that need to be there within a, mi the, a microsecond and they're just not <laughs> because the wires acting as delay line memory so there's a heck of a lot of PCB engineering that goes into designing a board like this but let's get to the more interesting side that actually has the components we want to look at mounted to them and so here we have the main motherboard. The actual thermal paste was really easy to clean off. Thanks, Sony. There all, there's also thermal pads that go on this chip, this chip, and two of the rigs down here for both the CPU and GPU chips. Finding information on some of these chips is very difficult. Hang on. Shut up, chair. Stop making that stupid noise. Right, back to that. Now when I did a memory count of this particular memory, the data sheet is actually not that difficult to find. It came up as if uh, each chip is 512 megabits. When you put that together that comes to 248 megabits. Divide that by 8 and you get 256 megabytes of RAM that the PS3 has. Yes, it actually has 256 megabytes. I was surprised by this and had to double check on the net. I was not wrong. Now another thing is a difference between the PAL and NTSC boards is the NTSC ones have this chip removed and it looks more like this chip over here mounted lower down and there's actually in a whole extra chip set above it. Whereas the PAL just has this single chip here without the extra chip set. So this is obviously to do with something to do with the video generation would be my guess because that's basically what PAL and NTSC are, they're video standards so this takes the output from the GPU which is this. I love the wank marketing names they give these chips. I mean the GPU they call it the Re RSX Reality Synthesizer. I mean, come on, that's a wonderfully wank term. And then, of course, we have the cell processor, or the cell BL, cell broadband engine. you got to love these wank marketing names. They are quite hilarious. There we go. I really am like Moss, laughing at this circuit board. <laughs> Here's our SATA hard drive connector, complete with whatever interfaces the SATA uses. And then of course a bit of a mystery chip this one. Can't actually find anything on it but there's things referring to it as a sort of GPU so yeah, sketchy details there but gonna say a long one this actually looks like it might actually be for the hard drive. It might be an IO chip essentially. This looks like it's for the Ethernet because we've got some differential pairs making their all the way down to the Ethernet socket down here. This chip is also found on second generation of the larger PS3s, informally known as the fat PS3s. So this is actually probably a second generation fat PS3, so it might be one of the ones where they stripped out a lot of the fun functionality, which is a shame. We shall test it out. We can certainly test the backwards compatibility, no problem. I've got plenty of PS2 games I can stick in there. This chip uh, comes once again from the uh, mysterious um, PAL chip that's only found on PAL ones. The interesting thing is on the back of these two chips is actually GB, so that's probably referencing to the region actually. Those caps look suspiciously bulging. Hmm. Ah, I'll pop them under the SR meter maybe. Or maybe not. But yeah, quite a lot of power regulation. The cell processor, which if I remember correctly actually has about 8 cores on it was actually a coalition development by IBM, Sony and Toshiba. This is where all the money, most of the money that these things cost would have gone into this chip. And the GPU was developed by a 
coalition between Sony and NVIDIA and probably once again a horrifically expensive custom chip but the interesting thing is with the cell architecture is it's not just used in the PS3 it also has appeared in like some IBM machines and various other, I can't, they, I brought, I read the list of Wiccan, I've already managed to forget it, <laughs> typical. But yeah, these things have also popped up in some servers in the commercial market here and there. But these things have a phenomenal amount of computing power. I remember Sony removing the backwards compatibility shortly after a university professor had like brought several PS3s. Hooked stuck Linux on them and hooked them out together in a supercomputer cluster. As you know, you've got a very unique CPU architecture and also you've got the GPU architecture. You can have a lot of ability to do some raw number crunching there. At the time it was the world's cheapest supercomputer which has now been outdone by Raspberry Pi supercomputers. But yeah, rather interesting, don't you think? And of course over here we've got our USB, this will probably be a USB controller, this chip here. we got this one by the PZO in the corner here. That's what makes the beeps when it dies. And it's mostly integrated onto a small number of chipsets, but actually the actual chipset is probably actually larger than that of the 360. And the board looks like it is a... I can actually see the edge of the layers because this looks... it wasn't smooth routed. So we got... One, two, three, four, five, six. Two of those layers are going to be dedicated ground planes. Well, not ground, but power grains. You're going to have a ground plane and you're going to have a power grain. Plenty of wiring, especially... You'll notice there's a certain amount of wiring around some of the differential pair points of data just to make sure there's good grounding so they don't get intercepted by noise. I mean, look at the grounding there between the power regulators and these. They don't want any any ripple getting onto these. But these are the sorts of chips, if ripple gets on there, you're going to end up with a system that crashes. I mean, look at any um, motherboards that gets crowded up, gunked up, exploding, bulgy cap around the CPU. It generally doesn't switch on because it doesn't have a stable power supply or clock or whatever the caps are supplying that have decided to die. But yeah, shall we try and fix it? I think so. My friend currently doesn't want to be recording and is hiding behind the wall, aren't ya? <laughs> but we're using a most high-tech solution of a baking tray three mugs to prop it up high because of the bloody, what is it that actually holds it in a wonky position? I don't know, it's something under there. Oh yes, the 32 amp connector. And of course the thermal oven is in heating. And the kitchen's actually reasonably tidy for once. <laughs> He's got hiding background. Right, so the oven is at temperature which is about 200 centigrade and it's going in for eight minutes. So we want to be reasonably quick up there. The oven light's broken because the oven's a piece of shit. And one of the clock's also broken on it. It's university, everything's broken in flats. Don't burn myself, don't burn myself, don't burn myself. There we go. Timer on. Right, where, where's my oven gloves? Oh, here they are. Now, we open the oven and our chips. Has the port melted? No, it hasn't, thank fuck. I thought one of the ports had melted then. Let's... Oh, it smells... Oh, yes, dinner's going to be wonderful. Got any ketchup, you, Sass? A bit in the fridge. That's <laughs> <laughs> in the fridge, I like that. Right, we are just going to... Right, how do we handle this? Um, well, none of the components melted, which is a good sign. I'm just going to leave it hanging out the oven like that for a period. Let it cool down a bit. There we go, it's recording, yay! So we go, da -da 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 -da. that's the button. Will it do? Will it work? 
we have, well it's not going in instant fail. Now this is interesting, so it hasn't made a difference, but we're not getting any video output. Might actually try to take it to the sitting room and test it in there. No, is it still on? I think it'd be worth actually testing it in the sitting room with a thingy in there. Yeah, let's do that. Come on, switch off. Oh yeah, hold it, don't you? Don't think this monitor likes the PS3, which is a bit shit. To summarise up, the uh, video you're seeing right now is Wipeout HD, which is basically an HD remake for the PS3 of Wipeout Pure on the PSP. But enough about that, the audio is blanked because of YouTube being complete dicks when it comes to copyright. So yes, we will have them hung one day. But as a regard to conclusion, is the PS3 is now fully functional to an insane level, although some game, although I am discovering the whole horrible loading installing nonsense, which is about as fun as having your eyes gouged out with a rusty spoon with spiky bits on the end. And the optical drive did hit some problems, but it turned out to be the exact same problem as fixing the, um, fixing the PS2 which had a problem where the worm gear drive got dirty and it disengaged itself. Well, the PS3 also did this, so I cracked it open, pissed around with the worm gear, almost lost their little spring several times, but was able to bring it up to full operational capacity. Although the game currently running on screen right now is actually running off the thing, off the hard drive. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed.